I. We're here today at Dimension 3 with Arnaud Paris, who is with Seismic Films, and he is a pro at Assimilate Scratch. Arnaud is going to take us through our steps at doing a 3D post-production. Arnaud, how are you today? I'm fine. Thanks. Very good. How's the show going so far? Well, a lot of people, quite busy. That's what we were hoping for. So, it's all good. Very good. Take us through. Show us what happens after you've got the image in the can and ready to go into post. Well, that's one thing. Um, the RED camera has a lot of uh, benefits, and uh, the, the main benefit would be the possibility to go real-time after the filming. And that's what we are doing right now. Um, you can see on the left and the right of the screen, you have two footage. You have the left footage, the right footage, and these are playing in real-time from the scratch, and these are the famous R3D files from the RED camera. Um, now, one thing that um, other companies have a hard time to do is to actually play real-time one stream of R3D. Here, Scratch is playing too. So that's, that's the key element, because once you have Scratch able to play two streams at the same time, that means that you have Scratch able to output these two streams and to feed um, any uh, 3D-ready uh, DLP, uh, projector, um, I don't know, there are many monitors coming out right now that have the possibility to play 3D footage and these can be connected to the scratch. So that's an amazing possibility for you right now to play and see 3D footage from the scratch. So this becomes not only a post tool but a, a production tool in the field. Correct. There are people taking out the scratch as a kind of like flight case uh, scenario and they have the 3D ready DLP or whatever they want to use and they set up a little, a little tent or something so that they don't have the, the, the sun coming on the, the monitors but that way you could actually go and have your uh, director and DP look at the footage in 3D on the field. Very good. Can you take us through a little bit of the adjustments that are available? Sure. Uh, what's really important to understand is that the RED cameras, they have, of course, uh, a specific setup for uh, filming in 3D. Uh, most of the time you have one camera that's flat uh, on the head, and there is another camera that's looking down right in front of this camera onto a mirror. So one camera is looking through the mirror, the other one is looking onto the mirror and they see what's in front of them but they see it so that they are almost overlapping each other. And that's really important because when you're filming 3D footage you need the cameras to be at least as close as your two eyes and that's a really short distance. So when that happens uh, on the field that you're trying to set up your cameras it's not going to be perfect. There's going to be a small difference uh, on the left, on the right, on the top, on the bottom. Scratch has this ability to fix in real time. So right now, um, let's say my uh, left image uh, is uh, a little too high. I can very easily go and fix uh, that onto the value. Now, let me check. So, see now I'm adjusting in real time the height of the image. Now we're looking at the screen onto each image is uh, separated, one in the left, one in on the right. Obviously if you were looking at a 3D ready monitor or DLP or whatever, uh, you would be able to do this adjustment looking at the actual footage in 3D, which would be much more intuitive than doing it like I'm doing it uh, next to each other. Um, but that, that possibility to play in real time um, is, is just, just a ball. Here I'm putting, I'm overlapping uh, the two images. That way it's easier to see the difference in height between the two images. See, I'm getting really close to it here. See, I'm almost perfectly matching the two images as far as height. Now the difference uh, between the, the right and the left, you want to keep that because that's what's making your image 3D. But uh, you can tweak it so that you get the perfect resu result. So um, let's say I want the, the umbrella here. I'm going to stop here. I want the umbrella to be somehow on the monitor. If you look at the space in front of you and you say the monitor is where the center of the action in 3D is happening and you want the umbrella to be at the center of the action, 
I'm going to make the adjustment so that the umbrella is perfectly overlapping between the right and the left. But now it might be a little hard to see on camera, but uh, here the head in front of us is with a little bit of separation between the right and the left. And if you look way back here, um, the light pole is actually also having a separation between the right and the left. That's what's making your 3D image actually 3D, to have this separation between the front, the back, and we have positioned the center of the image being the umbrella.